quote dessert cane, or as I like to call it, the revenge cane. Welcome to my summer cane reviews. Today I'm going to be talking through my experiences, my thoughts, and even some suggestions I have for you on the coat Dessert Cane. Now I went ahead and bought two types. I bought the gouged so I could take it through my own systems, but I also bought the gouged shaped and profiled. First off, let's talk about the gouged shaped and profiled. The gouged shaped and profiled cane is going to come in at about $4.05 per piece plus the cost of shipping. Uh, this cane was of great interest to me because a couple of students that I had worked with at a guest clinic had this style of cane and I was not familiar with it. Um, so immediately I wanted to know more about the sound and the colors they were getting with it, but also some of the best ways to scrape it. So let's first dig into the gouge shaped and profiled. This is going to fit the Rieger 2 shaper. It comes in with a gouge at about 130. The cane overall doesn't have a real spine to it. Uh, the profile that they're using doesn't take a lot out of the channels, um, so it's relatively thick um, in the back two thirds of it, but it does have a bit of a crescent at the very front of the tip. For reeds that come in with an overall length of about 55 millimeters, the heart, the most important measurement for me, comes in at about 55 to 62. Now, for those of you who have been following me for a while, you know that this is a bit light for what I prefer. Um, but if you leave the rails heavy on this, you can almost get away with it. Either that or I would consider shortening the overall reed by about a millimeter. Uh, that I found helped stabilize some of the E and C sharp that really want to sink when it's just too thin at the tip um, or the heart is too light. The profile for this reed is coming in at basically a finished reed. For the overall tip length of about 55 millimeters, the tip of the reed was coming in at about 39. Uh, the heart was coming in anywhere from about 55 to 62, and the back of the reed was coming in at about uh, 92 to 96, but if you put the collar in, then it would be ever so slightly thicker. Um, now, for those of you who have been following me for a while, you know that this heart measurement is a little bit light for me, and that's why I'm saying the profile came in at a finished reed. Um, when the heart is this light, um, I like to leave the rails a little bit heavier than normal. Um, also, I do minimal amount of work at the very tip, that crescent moon at the very edge of it, um, largely because once you start taking the rails down and you take the tip down on a piece of cane that has a heart that is so light, it's going to become unstable. Um, when it becomes unstable, then you have to look at clipping it and making a shorter read, and then you start playing with the variable of dimensions, whereas the only variable I wanna play with is the style of cane. So on this style of read, I would go ahead and leave the tip heavier than normal. I would take it down just a little bit, but I would leave the rails heavier than normal as well. This is going to make for a little bit of a brighter sound, but the cane, because it is described as a medium dense, kind of almost hard cane, it can stand up to that. Um, I had experiences with some of the cane being harder and some of the cane being softer. About one out of every three pieces was soft, um, and then the other two were much harder and more dense. The gouge shaped and profiled cane, when I first clipped the tip on it, did play just a tiny bit flat. Um, this I think is again because the heart is a little bit lighter than I would prefer. But I have found that if you soak the reed, let it rest, then after it completely dries out, soak the reed again, let it rest, um, and you do that several times, it will have the tendency to stiffen up. Um, you can also speed this process along by playing on it, and the more I played on these reeds, the more they started to center on the pitch, and the pitch actually came up just a little bit. So um, they were a tiny bit flat, but nothing that couldn't easily be remedied through a little bit of playing um, and a little bit of soak and weight. Okay, let's dig into the gouged cane. The gouged cane comes in at about $2.30 per piece, plus the cost of shipping. There was no hiding from the fact that this cane is variable. And when I mean variable, it is splotchy. Um, about two out of every three pieces that I looked at had portions where the cane, especially where the uh, blades were going to be, was splotchy. Uh, it had darker portions and then lighter portions. 
this is immediately a concern for me because um, oftentimes when you have a splotchy uh, portion of the cane, it's inconsistent. So you'll have portions of the cane that are harder and portions of the cane that are softer. Um, this can become a problem because when you're looking for a tip opening where the center of the tip is the last to close, you're not going to get it because of the inconsistencies of the cane. Oftentimes you end up with a tip opening that is asymmetrical. The asymmetrical tip opening is going to mean that the outer corners are sometimes the last to close instead of the center of the reed. This third piece of cane that was not splotchy was my favorite piece of cane of the bunch. First off, I was able to get a fantastic tip opening on it. It also was strong enough that it could stand up to my micrometic dimensions and still have one of the warmest, darkest sounds of a reed that I have made. Um, the other bit that I really liked about it, it didn't project as much as some of the other reeds that I have worked on, like the Madeira style of cane, because it was softer and it's more porous, but it's what I like to refer to as revenge cane. Um, it doesn't have that projection, but it has diminuendos. I mean, we're talking revenge diminuendos. What I mean by this is, I, I don't know, I know I'm not the only person out there that has experienced the clarinet. The clarinet and chamber music where they do those breath tones that go down to nothing and they look at you as a bassoonist like, what? What, can't you do that? And, and you look at them like, really? This cane will meet every clarinet player's breath tones and still be able to beat them at it. Similarly, I would use this for second bassoon playing. Um, for pieces like Brahms Requiem, um, when you have those pianissimo entrances um, in the low register and you want to guarantee that you're going to have the response that's there and it's going to have the tone color and the vitality, but you don't want to worry about whether or not your reed is going to have a kickstart, a little accent at the front of the note, even though it's in the low reg register of the bassoon, which is going to want to run sharp and is not going to want to respond at the start. This reed will do it. So in my opinion, I will probably buy this cane and throw out the pieces that have the splotchy portions just to get to some of that softer, more porous cane for pieces where I'm not looking for a lot of projection, but I'm looking for the ultimate diminuendos and response in quiet passages because it had it every single time. Okay, let's talk about suggestions for this style of cane. Because it is softer and more porous, hand gouge. In fact, I would hand gouge more than I normally would if uh, you buy just the gouge style of cane. If you're buying the gouge shaped and profile style of cane, just a minimal amount of hand gouging, largely because the profile is already so thin. Overall, because it's so porous and it is a little bit softer on those pieces that aren't splotchy, I like to uh, take this cane down with sandpaper. I find that it does an easier job of dealing with the pores inside the cane. Um, they look like little holes or air pockets. Um, usually you can see the fibers run up and down the side of the reed um, and on the top of it as you're scraping it down. And I like to keep those uh, fibers running just parallel the whole way down the reed. In this case, with all of the little pores sections you'll see those little holes that are in it and it's very easy to catch those and tear so I really like using sandpaper on a type of cane that's this porous because it's so thin I like to make sure that I leave just a little bit heavier in the outer triangles at the tip largely because I want to make sure that even though it's soft I don't lose the stability of E and C sharp and my final suggestion is those pieces that are splotchy, that create an uneven tip opening, just let them go. They're not going to be the reed that you want them to be. Uh, they are a harder style of cane, but they're just not going to have the best reed capabilities and they're not going to have the diminuendos, which I absolutely love in the softer style of cane. Okay guys, I hope you have enjoyed another trip to my read desk and my experiences and my thoughts and some of my suggestions that I have for working with this style of cane. Um, I am relatively new to Coke Dessert, so if you have your own experiences that uh, you have from working with it, I would love to hear about it in the comments. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you don't want to miss any of my future videos with my thoughts or suggestions on any of the different types of cane that I'll be trying this summer, be sure to click that subscribe button. And I will see you guys next time. Bye! The first type of cane I'm going to be taking you through is the Madeir style of cane.
Now I chose to go after the Madeira first because there are so many of you that are following me on Instagram and I'm following you back just so I can get a sneak peek at your read desk. And you're trying the Madeira Cane and many of you are liking it. So 